divine principle within us. And so I want to focus our attention on what we mean when we confess that the Holy Spirit is the Lord and the giver of life. The Lord and the giver of life. First of all, the Lord, because he is God. Uh, it, it, it's sometimes causes us to swallow hard when we say with the Nicene Creed that the Holy Spirit with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. That we worship and glorify the Holy Spirit along with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is not a divine principle or a divine energy or a divine activity. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. The Holy Spirit is God. And that means the Holy Spirit possesses all of the attributes that the Father and the Son possess. Omnipotence, omniscience, aseity, impassibility, love, holiness, justice. All of the attributes of the Godhead are possessed equally and consubstantially by the Holy Spirit with the Father and the Son. And yet, he's also the giver of life. He's not just divine. He's not just God sharing equally in those divine attributes. He also has his own personal attributes that distinguish him from the Father and the Son. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. Nothing comes from the Holy Spirit, nor is the Holy Spirit the mediator of any of God's activities. But the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. He is the member of the Trinity who brings about the completion of God's purposes. All of God's external works, creation, providence, redemption, consummation, proceed from the Father in the Son by the Spirit. And so we should seek to avoid what I call the division of labor mistake, where we we, we tend to see the, the, the Father as the Creator, the Son as the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit as the Sanctifier. There's reason for that. We can't talk about everything at the same time, and it makes sense uh, to talk about uh, the Father as uh, the source of creation, the Son as the one who comes from heaven to redeem us from our sins, and the Spirit who applies redemption. But in doing so, we should never forget that in every external work of the Godhead, the Father is the source, the Son is the mediator, and the Holy Spirit is the consummator. And that's why the early church fathers said, in every external work of the Godhead, the works are undivided. So it's not that each person is engaged in a different work, but rather that each person is engaged in every work differently. In every work, the Father is the origin, the Son is always the mediator, and the Spirit is always the one who brings it to completion. Or, since Scripture often refers to God's work as the result of His powerful word, we can say, the Father speaks, the Son is the word, in whom and for whom all things exist, and the Holy Spirit is the one who brings to effect that word that is spoken. And so that's why I've titled this talk, How the Holy Spirit Changes Everything, because that is the Holy Spirit's job description. In every work of Trinity, the Holy Spirit is the one who changes, more specifically, perfects every work of the Father in the Son. So what we meet in the unfolding biblical drama is not merely three personas, but three persons. Not merely three roles, but three actors. There are many ways of saying this. According to uh, the uh, 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 biblical story, we can say that the, the Father works for us, the Son works among us as one of us, and the Holy Spirit works within us. Or we can say the Father is the promise maker, Hebrews 6.13, the Son is the promise, 2 Corinthians 1.20, and the Spirit brings about within us the amen of faith to that promise, 1 Corinthians 
Now this emphasis uh, really became well established, especially in uh, the work of the great fourth century Cappadocian fathers, from Cappadocia, what's now Turkey, particularly Basel, uh, his brother Gregory of Nyssa, and their friend Gregory of Nazianzus, a very uh, close group of three theologians who, by the way, were, were catechized by their big sister, Macrina. Don't forget Macrina. And Gregory of Nyssa, for example, wrote that none of the persons executes any work apart from the others, but every operation which extends from God to the creation has its origin from the Father and proceeds through the Son and is perfected in the Holy Spirit, end quote. And it was that kind of formulation and their way of unpacking it that uh, attracted John Calvin to the Cappadocian fathers. In his own words, he said, to the Father is attributed the beginning of all action, the fountain and source of all things. To the Son, wisdom, counsel, and arrangement in action, while the energy and efficacy of all divine action is assigned to the Holy Spirit. That's, that's quite an important job description for the Holy Spirit. The energy and efficacy of all action that is conducted by the Trinity in relation to creation. With that introduction behind us, we turn to the first point, the giver of life, a long and fruitful career. You know, starting with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost is like walking into a movie in the middle. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit has had a long and fruitful career before he has been poured out at Pentecost. From Genesis to Revelation, from creation to consummation, the Spirit is the giver of life. That's his role in every operation of the Trinity. 